cover a whole bunch of different topics, and then at the end we're going to have a Q&A. So if you guys have any questions, we'll do our best to them. Um, I'm Morgan. I am Julie Pony on our Square Club Witchcraft. And is this Steve? He owns Witchcraft. This is uh, Jeff. Curtis! I'm so sorry. All right, with uh, MCPDP. And then we have Jeff. And
so with MCPVP, like I talked about when I was during my introduction, um, the whole I saw was that you know I didn't want to get on the server and fill out a whitelist. I just wanted to hop on and play. I wanted to hop on and play and not have to worry about oh did I say the wrong thing in chat? Um, you know did. Is, is this a PvP zone? You know, can I destroy this building? Um, so we made our servers um, centered around the idea that you can do whatever you want. You know, as long as you're not cheating. And you know, cheating requires you to go do all this ex extraneous stuff to install, you know, mods on your server. So it's not just something any regular Minecraft player is going to hop on your server and accidentally cheat. Um, and so that's that's the hole we decided to fill. I think server identity, I mean, is definitely the most important topic for you to think about. Um, there's, uh, you know, the, the niche that you fill, you know, is what's going to define, uh, I mean, define your entire server. Uh, and that, that's going to spread into, you know, your staff, um, your modization. We'll talk about these things later in more detail. Um, but that's, I mean, if you don't have a niche, then you're floating around, you're a me too server. I mean, it wouldn't be a me too server. You want to you wanna build your own server that's, that's, that's you. Um, you don't want to, you know, look like everyone else. Because, you know, if you, you have a bunch of paper clips in your hand, you toss them on the table, you know, which, which paper clip would you take? If you have one yellow paper clip in the pile, you're going to pick the yellow paper clip because it's the one that stands out from the rest. So, um, definitely want to uh, be unique. Well, if you're going to the server identity, um, what I do, or what my community does, is I've been on a variety of uh, up-and-coming servers, uh, Cold 2's world being the largest one, as it was a server cluster. Uh, finding your niche as a, as a beginner um, when you come to servers, uh, like he said, a lot of the, you need to find your aim, your focus, what you want to do. Um, with Cold Hughes World, we were lucky to be able to be a large entity. We had niches, we fulfilled a lot of niches through different servers. So for, for us, it wasn't necessarily about the niche, um, about focusing on one server as in how to, or how to market each of those special things under one umbrella. Uh, but as I put on other servers, the idea is to focus on that one uh, that one special thing, whether it was um, being a pure vanilla server, which is, lo and behold, a really rare thing these days, um, how, to ex uh, how to execute that as well, um, and then as we go through staffing organization, the niche is what's going to be what you're going to drive um, through your promotions, through your marketing, uh, and through um, your perks, because it's all based on what your game of uh, what your type of server is going to be. So one thing too is that you also have to figure out um, is exactly what kind of mode you want your server to be in, and that's incredibly important. If you throw, you can have multiple modes in the server, so you can have like survival, PvP, uh, and creative, but you have to figure out how to um, bring those together without you know, overloading the members. So if you have all these different things and it's not presented in a way that's appealing or if there's nothing new, you're not going to keep the members. They're going to go on the server, see that, oh, I can do this, but what will that get me? You want to get, you want to have like levels in almost everything as well. So if you have you know, survival, let's say, more familiar with that. Um, we have the different rate policies, and that is what strives people to actually want to keep playing because they go into one level and they have something else to do, they have another level to get to. So you want to have some kind of either ranking system or something that they can achieve to keep people coming back moving forward. So if you just have like a regular server and you don't really have anything in front of the game. So we're going to talk about game modes and obviously 
be choosing if you're going to allow your players that creative or survival upon entering the server is going to create who you are. Because if somebody has creative, then you are deciding that you want to be a hill server, basically. And if you have survival, that's more of an economy-based server, meaning your diamonds and your more valuable items will get you out of value. And that's where you'll have problems with people using modifications on Minecraft and X-Ray and things like that, which are preventable, and we can go into that and we'll start talking about the audience. But choosing a game mode is going to be your identity with where you want to go with the server. So that is a really big um, decision. Um, so the third game mode that uh, he had mentioned is Adventure Mode. And that's a pretty new one. Uh, but that's what we, we have sabotage servers and we have capture the flag servers. Those both run in Adventure Mode. So the way Adventure Mode works is to make you break anything, but you don't have any any special uh, permissions. So um, it, it, it kind of gives you a, a cool way to, to capture the flag. There's, there's no really need to destroy the map, you know. Um, so we just we load the map and you can run around and capture the flag, you know, kill each other, but we don't have to worry about, you know, fixing the map after the game's done um, or anything like that because it's an adventure mode. Um, something else I want to talk about for server identity is um, keeping your server simple. Um, if you if you have a too if your server's too complex, you, you want you want any old user to be able to log into your server at any given time and know what's going on. Um, if you log on if you log into somebody's server and you, know, you have a thousand notifications, you know, and you got you know. 10 foot wall, 10 foot high wall, filled with signs, um, and you have to you know, read all the signs, figure out the rules to, to play the game, um, you're, gonna, you're just automatically going to lose a certain percentage of your players. Now, there have been successful servers that, that have done similar things. Um, so I'm not saying that's, a, that's the wrong way to do it, to do it uh, because, you know, Servers like that attract more hardcore players. There's a there's a certain class of players who will definitely, you know, spend the time and resources uh, involved to, to learn the game mode and get into it. And you can make super super fun game modes that are super complex. But the way ATP PvP tries to do things, we try to make things as simple as possible. We want anybody to be able to log on to any of our servers at any time and just immediately figure out what's going on. It shouldn't take anybody longer than 30 seconds um, to know, okay, so I need to run and capture that flag, you know. Um, so I think. Uh, so I, besides making it uh, simple, if you got if it is more complex, if it's much more um, of a system, if you will, how we do it on with, with Cold Tears World was that we actually made it fun. Um, a tutorial is not a bad thing as long as you make it, as long as you keep them entertained. Uh, so, for instance, on several servers that we had, um, we had an academy type thing where people would go through and they would have to read a few things, they would do things, and there would be a quiz. And if they, you know, didn't get the answer wrong or they get it right, they fell into lava and died. You know, stuff like that, even though it seems kind of um, awful to think about, is something that um, it will train your people when you get on the server for a longer time. Uh, if you, instead of just inundating them with a bunch of signs, as he said, on a wall. So if you do make it complex and you do need, and you do have to enunciate uh, all of the rules, ensure that it's a fun, it's fun. Um, and if you do have a website that we'll go into later, you know, you can make it so that they can earn stuff through doing it. So it's more of a caring approach. Uh, so that's something you can keep an, uh, an idea when you are focusing on your sort of creation. And I have something to add. Signs are the bane of our existence because people come on our server and they're like, it's science. I don't want to read all those. So we actually created our server with basically you walk through a portal, you go into the hub, pick where you want to go, and you have the rule book, which is a new plugin, which you actually can use to write whole books, 
and whenever anyone new comes on the server, they get this 